All righty. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? All right, switching my chair to the one that doesn't squeak. And uh, just want to make sure y'all can hear me good on that end. We're live on a Monday. I didn't get a chance to text or send a push notification out through the app this time, but it's all good. I just wanted to talk about um, the DIY musician journey. All right, so let me check. I got this microphone going. Let's see. I don't even have this thing plugged up, y'all. Let's see which sounds better. I'm going to switch between this microphone on the computer or the one that's on this way. So let's see what that sounds like. See what I get from switching to that. That's quieter. I got to turn the record level up. I think that might be all. It might be all like uh, all I can get. Okay, let's switch. I'm gonna switch back my audio. microphone see how that goes seem like i get a better signal there with the internal microphone there on the computer yeah it's heavier all right y'all <clears throat> so um yeah we're live here and uh just wanted to share a little bit about the journey from being a DIY musician and um, give some, some insight and perspective and talk about uh, the journey. And I've been at this, um, man, I, I was telling, I was playing last, uh, was Saturday night at Scat Jazz Lounge. And I was talking with, um, some of the people there just talking about how, you know, I've been playing for 30 years and it's a trip. I'm, I'm just 42, but I started at uh, 12. So I actually been playing, I actually started playing the violin at 10, uh, but saxophone was uh, at 12. And so I started playing professionally really around 14, 14, 15, and, uh, you know, playing gigs. And I put out my own tape around 14, 15, 16. I was putting out these uh, tapes of play-alongs with me playing over them. And uh, I've always kind of been one who was into publishing music and, uh, and sharing with people. You know, I just enjoy doing that. Um, and so I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about um, the journey of being a, a DIY musician. DIY means do it yourself. And so um, we are in a, in a time now where um, we have a lot of technology that really um, affords us the opportunity or presents an opportunity for us to do our own broadcasts, to do our, have our own shows, programs, to create content, and to be able to uh, 
uh, serve that up and, you know, give it to um, people out there like, you know, like like you like you're doing now. You're watching this on YouTube or Facebook. And so um, I wanted to just kind of talk about the journey um, of publishing uh, new music, uh, publishing um, videos, having lessons that I teach um, to my students, playing gigs and how I manage all of those things, releasing new products and services and stuff like that. Um, well, first of all, it has to start with a passion. You know, your passion is something that you really have a burning desire or love for. And so it started out as having a love for uh, music and uh, learning music and also performing and um, producing. You know, so you got learning, performing, producing. So those are all different um, passions because I like to learn. I like to practice. <laughs> I don't have the time to, to practice like I used to, but still I enjoy it. Just think about it. I was talking to another friend, piano player, uh, Fred, and he was talking about we're the only ones, musicians, that don't get paid for practicing, whereas you got psychiatrists who has their private practice. You got doctors who have their private practice. And these people practice medicine and they practice on people and see what it, see if it works or not. <laughs> but we practice and develop as musicians, but are we getting paid for practicing? That's why I started Jazz Webshed because I wanted to get paid for practicing. You know, so I started that back in 2009 because I enjoy practicing, I wanted to um, be able to monetize that. And so because of YouTube and, and uh, yeah, YouTube was one of the first um, outlets that I used to publish gigs and um, sessions of me practicing. And I would even do live streams of, of rehearsals and stuff like that. And so but that was good because it was a a way for me to connect or present what I do locally um, to a wider audience around the world. And from doing that, I was able to get um, lessons from, uh, you know, teach lessons to students in Italy, students in uh, uh, the UK, uh, students from you know, uh, Brazil, uh, different places. Um, and of course, you know, United States. And it was, I got gigs. I got gigs where I was able to travel around the country um, from doing stuff on YouTube or people would learn about what I was doing on YouTube. And so <clears throat> it presented um, a way for us to connect with people. And so, well, but what happens is a lot of times as these technologies come about, I think a lot of musicians and not just musicians, it's like anybody who has a hobby or passion or something, a side hustle, uh, you got your main work, your main job, which is, uh, you know, what, what you spend your time doing, you know, a lot of times eight hours a day or some people do part-time or whatever. And then whatever leisure time you have, you will have that time where you put it into your business. And I think a lot of times we are overwhelmed or we get overwhelmed of uh, with all of the things that we're supposed to do for our business to the point where we end up only focusing on the stuff that we uh, really feel like doing, <laughs> uh, which which is the thing where you, you got to think about it. Um, you got to think about it. You got the thing that you love to do, like, for instance, with music, for instance. I enjoy um, creating music. So 
what 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 I do from time to time, y'all y'all will watch these streams and I'll uh, lay a track down. So actually, a lot of the stuff I might have uh, done last week, I only I might use some of that, but a lot of that I scratched. <laughs> but I was just sharing with you the process on hold on. I think I deleted it, but uh, and I was streaming with my phone, so it didn't go. It was like real choppy, so I deleted that stream, but. But what you have to do, I was just getting to the point of whatever you, you enjoy doing, you have to uh, learn how to, like they say, kill two birds with one stone where you can satisfy your own enjoyment and then also you can satisfy somebody else's enjoyment because ultimately you want to make money from what you love to do and so the reason why i broadcast and do um my live streams and stuff like that is because that's a way for me to engage with an audience you know and we go through these three different um steps or, or phases if you 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 would, you would think about it when you connect with somebody on the other side. So you're on the other side of this computer. I don't know who you are. I see that there's some people watching, <laughs> but it's uh, three different uh, stages. So from you subscribing to the channel or you know following my post on, on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or get on the email list or whatever, you're gonna go through a period of time where you're gonna get to know me. And from you getting to know me, you will then like me. And then after you like me, then you would trust me. And so we all go through this process, no matter what it is. It can be, you know, uh, you can be a coach, you can be a uh, business leader, network marketer, or whatever, um, a lawyer, uh, you know, any, any business that you have that's client based, you have to connect with an audience and you have to have a message and you have to have value that you bring. And over time, from people just chilling, flipping through YouTube or flipping through Facebook, flipping through Instagram, they, they constantly watching your, your content pop up. And then over time, they'll go through that process. They'll like get to know you, they'll like you, and then they'll trust you. And then at that point, they're your, what do we call target audience. And so once a person is your target audience, then uh, they will uh, buy and support whatever you have. And that's where you would create uh, products and services to serve that audience. And so uh, it started with music, with creating CDs, and then um, I started teaching lessons online. I started doing master classes. I, I created a membership site. I was always doing YouTube videos, uh, Facebook, and really pushing it hard, taking advantage of um, having access to the whole world by making a post, you know? And so um, now I am uh, busy still doing the same things i'm trying to keep uh, i'm trying to keep the main thing the main thing because that's the thing as you evolve going through this journey you'll go through different stages or phases to where it's like okay okay i've, I've you know i don't feel like <laughs> editing video so so check this out like it, there was a time when i would sit down and i would edit video and push stuff out like every day, clips from gigs, when, especially when I was really hitting it, traveling and playing, I would be posting videos. And it's sad to say a lot of that content, the, those videos are gone because of uh, the channel being erased on uh, YouTube, uh, the Texas Tenor channel. But I got hard drives with some of that stuff on it, but I have to go back through it. But I want, I want to drive a point drop a point here like you know our our journey our life uh that we live is not just uh for it to be private 
in the sense there's a bigger picture. We have a bigger calling and a bigger, um, yeah, a big, a bigger calling, you know, whereas you got your, your life is bigger than just your profession, you know, or just your craft. And you learn that um, the older you get, of course, when you have a foundation, you know, spiritually or or you come up, you know, in church or have a sense of um, reverence for, for God and you're aware of, you know, you're not just living for yourself, then you start to put things in to order to where you know that it's not just about me um, just playing music for my own enjoyment, but on the on the receiving end, that music that I play touches people. It touches people, heart, soul, spirit, you know, mind, body, like the whole being. And so with that comes responsibility. But at the same time, you realize <clears throat> that God wants to use you and you get better organized on how he uses you. And so it, that's why I say it's stages. Like, and then with, with being a content creator, there's there's different sides to it. You you get inspired, you create, um, but then you have to manage. You have to manage your brand, you have to manage your your timing of when to post things, you have to manage uh talking to people, marketing, you have to manage getting gigs, uh, talking to people about bookings. You have to manage um, all of these different things, especially when you're in business for yourself. <clears throat> and so um, it's fun, but it's a lot of work. And so as you grow um, in your business, you have to learn to delegate certain tasks to others to take care of. So that you can continue to keep the main thing, uh, the main thing, because people were drawn to you or are drawn to you because of one particular or a few particular areas that you're really good at. And so one of those key areas for me is, um, you know, the saxophone playing and, and writing music. So and, and also teaching, too. So my thing is kind of threefold, maybe. Uh, maybe a little more, but threefold. Like, number one, I know what my gift is. My gift is 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 a teacher. I'm a teacher, but also uh, word of knowledge teacher. Those are, you know, they kind of can work together. And so, even when you think about uh, saying something like that. Like when you come up as a kid, there's certain instincts that you that you have that are natural for you, and you really don't know that that's something special until other people point it out in you. And especially, you know, when I would be so honed into practicing and learning, I didn't know that my appetite and drive for learning things uh, was. So aggressive, but I think it just had to do with um, being visually impaired too. I had to work harder to, you know, things that most people can see. For somebody who can't see as well, we have to work harder by listening, studying, researching. We got to spend extra time to really get um, the details, whereas someone you know, at a quick glance could get all the details from just looking at something. Whereas I got to think about, you know, getting an audio book or, 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 or get, you're looking something up online. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm saying now I'm talking about now, but I'm talking about if I go back when I was a kid, we, there was no, I would say no, there's no internet. The internet came in 95, 94, 95. Um, and then YouTube and all of that came, uh, Google, what, 2000, in, in the 2000s, like 2005, 2006, 2007, something like that. 
But I'm just thinking about the process of how we learned, um, you know, especially learning music. You know, I learned a lot of stuff by ear. I learned a lot of music. I memorized a lot of music uh, coming up in high school or even middle school. Uh, I, I could read. I could read, but I had to get close to see the music. But I would, from us rehearsing it over and over, I could memorize the parts just because we've gone over it. And I would use cues from the other sections, when to come in and everything like that. But I didn't know I was putting this stuff together um, so fast um, and retaining this stuff. And whereas other people couldn't play their music when when the music wasn't in front of them. But for me, I was doing that when I was playing violin, like memorizing the stuff. And so kind of what I had to deal with physically you know, having a visual impairment, but also my mind, the way I was wired to learn, it kind of transpired into how I approached everything. And so uh, that's why I give insight about the, the gift. Um, you got to learn what your gift really is and and how to succeed uh, beyond music. And it's not, even if you're not a musician, like, you might be good at a particular craft, but your gift is really something is, is something else. It's like really your gift is the way you think. All right. So that's the way that's what you want to think about. And, and my like I talk about here in this book too, the Christian musician, I talk about how my, my pastor was telling me you make money with your mind and not your music. And so that was a great nugget. I always tell people about it because um you know, this this is where it all comes from up here, how you put things together. And so uh, with 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 thinking on those on those terms, you think about how when you're a kid, you're fascinated with an instrument and a, a certain art form like music. Uh, <clears throat> you dig into the music, like especially jazz, jazz and classical music is very engaging to the mind, to the brain. And so it's so many uh, different components to it that um, can have you studying for like a lifetime. And so I was so into uh, jazz because it was so stimulating. It was challenging and uh, it was such a big archive of, um, of music to learn from, you know, when I was in high school, and yeah, as a teenager, I'm listening to music from the 30s through the 70s. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, listening to Blue Note, the Motown stuff. I'm listening to Impulse and, you know, I'm listening to uh, all these records. I had a record player. My mom had a record player. I would have Mr. Uh, uh, Grover Washington Jr. record. I had David Sanborn record. I had John Coltrane record because of uh, the, the neighbor across behind us, my, behind uh, my, uh, my mom's house, mom and dad's house, uh, he had some records he gave to me and I would listen to those and learn them right off the record, um, Cannonball and John Coltrane. So as a kid, hearing that stuff, and then when I, uh, tapes, we used to go to Sound Warehouse, Sound Warehouse and Borders Books of Music. Borders Books of Music came later where I got all my CDs. But just imagine, you 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 a kid and you get fascinated with this music jazz and then you i'm listening to sonny stead and gene ammons i'm listening to art blakey modern jazz quartet i'm listening to lee morgan and and charlie parker john coltrane cannonball stanley turrentine like they got records i mean they got like oh, so much so much music and that, that music was just it was just so inspiring it was so innovative and like and so forward thinking at that time i mean even to this day the stuff that was recorded um the way that they were using this their their mind their brain was just beautiful i mean it's just phenomenal a phenomenal experience art form you know jazz music and so um I was just so captivated with it to where I had to uh, I had to have it. <laughs> but what I'm saying 
uh, from um, from digging in and learning, you have you mature. You you go you go to the, you get to the point where you learn. Okay, it's bigger than just trying to execute a certain style on the saxophone. You have to be responsible. Um, you know, away from the instrument, you have responsibility, especially if you want a family. You know, you got to take care of that family. You got to be able to uh, provide for that family, you know, both naturally and and uh, protect them spiritually and, and all of those things. And so a lot of times, if you're so engulfed into one area, you'll neglect these others. And so that's where uh, mentorship comes into play through others, other older, um, more experienced uh, people in the field or people that you can model or watch, you know, they help you to uh, get the balance that you need so that you can be the total package. And especially when you are uh, connected, you know, and you have a, you know, your father is a, is a good example, father and mom, and then, you know, your pastor or friends, uh, their parents, you know what I'm saying? If you hooked into a community where you're seeing other examples, you start putting things together. Okay, okay, okay. I need to make sure I'm uh, balanced or I'm, I'm a good person or I'm, I'm, I have integrity, you know what I'm saying? So you learn how to um, fill in the gaps from watching other people. And so, especially with music, I mean, sorry, with, uh, with business, because if you're doing something that your parents didn't do um, pertaining to business, you don't have a, an example, a model. So you got to outsource that. You got to look at people who have businesses. Um, you got to read books. You got to watch videos. You got to um, get audio books or whatever to fill in those gaps and kind of learn what they did, how they did it in order to implement those ideas uh, and strategies uh, into your own thing so that you can grow and bloom. And so it's something that's a lifelong journey, but at the same time, there are principles, there are um, just key foundational things that you have to have uh, just to be able to function uh, at, as a, a business person. So this DIY do-it-yourself is like you know it's it's this whole idea of not using the the corp the big corporation or or using the 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 modern way or let me see what's the word it's it's, it's basically you you're doing it yourself it's like publishing self-publishing you know it's another thing i self-publish this i self-publish my cds i don't my record label is my record label. You know, I wasn't signed to a, a record label. Um, I have my own publishing. And so I have my own membership site. So I've always been an advocate for uh, self-publishing and, and, and uh, doing it yourself. And that doesn't mean the quality has to be bad. I think now, especially, it's, it's a lot uh, easier to create uh, good content because you can always outsource, you know, if you need graphic design done or if you need a website done or if you need, you know, podcast announcer to to do something, you know, you there's so many resources that we can use to get, um, you know, work contracted out. And uh, I like it. I enjoy the whole process, creative process, because then again, it's, it's my creative or my gift that's being applied into another area it's focused on business now and um because you got i gotta maintain what i'm you know i gotta carry what i'm carrying or continue to walk um uh, carrying all of, of what i have to carry and so so but the thing with with all of those things being a creative you still have to discipline yourself to um have some sort of routine uh, because you have to continue, like I say, to keep the main thing, the main thing. And that's why I can't, I took a break from doing streams uh, for a minute 
Um, then I came back because I wanted to keep the main thing, the main thing. Uh, and I'm working on, um, you know, new music and I'm working on, uh, put, I'm putting new music inside of Texas Tenor Academy. <clears throat> and then I am uh, just looking forward to continue to put um, new videos out and stuff like that. And so, um, and, and it's, it challenged, it's, it's a challenge, but at the same time, I, I can delegate certain things that I used to do. Uh, I can afford to uh, pay somebody else to do it now. And so, but even when you do that, you still got to have a core team of people who understand your brand and your way of doing things, um, you know, so that they can uh, make sure you can trust them, you know? And so, but it's, it's fun. You know, I enjoy what I do. I'm, I'm always getting uh, calls and uh, texts from different people around the country who are inspired, who want to connect with me. And um, it's just good because everybody's in their own world and you don't know what you don't know. But the beautiful thing about our technology and the beautiful thing about where we are now in the world, we're so close. It's like we're connected. You know, you, you'd be surprised how close you are to somebody in another country, you know, who watched your stuff. And it's like just because they watch your stuff, you talk with them and y'all, a lot of what you believe is, 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 is parallel with what they believe, you know, because they had certain desires and certain things that they were wanting to, to do and they they search for it and they might have stumbled across you know video that i posted you know so no matter who you are no matter what your genre is or what your your um, business is um there's an audience out there that that's interested in it <laughs> and so um it's just a matter of doing what you do have it, what you have a passion for and figure out a way that you can share it with others and so as you uh, do what you do and you share with others, if you can stream it or do a video caption, you do it and then put it out there, um, that'll start the process. And you can fine tune things as you go, because like I said, you don't know what you don't know. And once you do take a swing, you get a result. Either you can hit it and it's, it not, knocks a home run or you can hit it and get a base hit. You might hit it and get a foul. But you hit, you swing for always for an opportunity to uh, to get a hit. And so, I mean, that could be true of music. That can be true of a certain product or service that you offer. You know what I'm saying? But if you just keep on publishing, keep on creating, keep on uh, searching and learning, you're learning in that process. And then you can better um, fine tune what you're doing. Uh, just from being in the process, a lot of I, I remember a, a saying that I heard that says, uh, "Don't wait to be inspired to work. You work, and the inspiration will come." And that's true. You know, when you do work, when you're in the middle of it, you learn. It's like, oh, okay. Whereas you would have never been able to put certain things together if you wouldn't have started the process in the first place. I got people. Who say, man, I need to start doing, putting stuff up on Instagram. Man, I got to put this music out. And they just talk and talk and talk about it where I'm about to release another single. You know, I released uh, In the Village. It's on Apple Music, Spotify, and those places. I was trying to make it to where it's only in my um, app. But it's really a challenge because I really got to push and market the app and uh, cue streams. Um, so I put it out. Uh, on the streaming platforms, but I'll, inside of Q streams is my videos. So you can watch the music, the, you can get the music, but you can also get mu uh, videos and things like that. So um, I'm a, I, and all of that's available in Texas Tenor Academy. But um, what was I saying? So, so the, the, the whole, the whole thing you create and then you learn from what you create and you fine tune what you get. A lot of, lot of people really 
people who've been in business for the longest time, um, they just package up the same thing in a different way to put a different spin on it. You can like movies, right? We got the same movies uh, that just keep on reproducing like a, a new version of it. You know what I'm saying? Or you got stories that act like the same type of story, but it's a different title, the same scenarios because it's just re new actors. It's just a different packaging of presenting the same thing. And that's the thing you got to think about like a song. I mean, a song is the same way. I mean, I got old songs, but those old songs are, are new to new audiences. You know what I'm saying? So some people will be like, I'm ready for you to put out something new. And then some people are like, man, I didn't know you had this music. And so, so it's always a thing where you got to keep um, sharing and you got to keep showing up to let people know about what you have. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's like a win-win. Like, even if you don't have your stuff all together, you might not have everything in, in place or, um, and, and, and it's okay because we, all of us don't, you know, as good as certain brands look, <laughs> the people behind them are still people. Like we all have issues. We're not experts at everything. I mean, we, 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 we're, we're experts at certain things, but other areas we got to grow in. It's just that with a YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, anybody can publish stuff, you know, publish, you know, content. A lot of content is garbage, but people watch it. <laughs> a lot of content is really good. You know, people watch it. You know, you got the in-between. Some people want the stuff that's not as polished or they want the stuff that's not uh, so pristine because they want that raw, that raw, raw experience. And, you know, I kind of come from that. Like, I, you know, my, my music is good. I believe good quality, but sometimes my streams <laughs> don't, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I always want to be honest. Uh, my brand, my philosophy, I guess is, um, uh, I just wanted to be honest. I wanted to help people. I wanted to be accessible and down to earth, you know, I'm productive and getting music done and, you know, putting out, you know, having a membership site and doing stuff like that. But at the same time, I just want to be able to help people and, and be able to, to, to illustrate, Hey, you can do it. You know, if you have a passion for, for something, um, like my uh, podcast, the Productive Q podcast, where I uh, inspire you in the area of your, your passion so you can produce, you know, um, so you can produce in the area of your passion. And so, um, uh, so what I'm doing is making sure I do these lives on Monday, getting, getting back to those and uh, whether it's talking or whether it's playing or whether it's doing an in the lab session while working on a song, I'm just trying to be consistent and, um, I'm putting podcasts out in the app. Make sure y'all download Quaman Fowler app. In the Quaman Fowler app, you'll be able to get um, all of the podcasts. Uh, Quamanfowler.com, they're on there as well. And uh, it's a process, y'all. I mean, it's a lot to do, but it's just fun. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a project with a doctor. Um, he's He has a really good deal. And... Um, Actually, his name is uh, Mr. Baxter Montgomery. He has his own channel. Um, and so I'm actually part of his community, too. I just joined his community. And uh, he's all about uh, plant-based uh, diet and uh, healing chronic illness just through your diet. And so I'm not there yet in terms of being vegan or anything like that. But I've learned a lot because I had to work on the project. I'm doing the music for um, his documentary uh, series. And so um, just looking at what he's doing, 
Um, he has a, a, a great community. He has a lot of testimonies of people who've gone through his program, who have reversed their issues with chronic illness, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and high blood pressure and all these different things. And so uh, we had to create music for uh, this, this series. Uh, well, I created a theme song and uh, he gave me different bullet points and things that he wanted to have in there. And so uh, I worked with some of my crew, my guys, who we worked together on uh, putting words to things. And uh, we um, put together a nice theme song. And so from that, we did a, a video, a music video. And also we're seeing that this is like opening up a whole new world. Like think about this, y'all. Think about, now this is opening up. <laughs> think about this. So check this out. You got a lot of bad music, right? In terms of, it can be the lyrics, it's trash, the quality, is trash but or 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 you can say the um it can be pop music where it's like the chord structures or it's nothing really stimulating it's not you know, it's it's just simple it's more so for the point of programming people to be simple let's say but then on the flip side you got the medical industry where you have um a lot of misinformation or the wrong information that people are uh, receiving when it comes to how they deal with their health, just to say it lightly, you know, but you have these doctors, these holistic doctors and these people who are researching and really getting the, the real stuff to help people cure illness. And, but at the same time, it's not popular or it's not the message is not mainstream, you know? And it's the same thing with music. Like the music that I create is not mainstream, but it's the truth. Just like Dr. Montgomery and, and his experience and what he has is the truth. And so we're seeing, I'm seeing a whole new opportunity here where we will be creating uh, content, music to, to fit that message. And uh, it's like a, a blessing. It's a dream come true in the sense of to be able to uh, help people, not only with music, but to team up with someone who can help people with their health and, and wellness. And so um, it's just been exciting uh, working on the, the music and working on the words. And then it's like, I'm working, I'm hearing these words, these lyrics. And I was like, dang, I got to start exercising and eating right and stuff like that. I'm not like out of shape or terribly, you know, uh, not healthy and stuff like that. But it's like, once you learn about all of this stuff, you know, from a person who has an experience like that, who has experience as a cardiologist and it's like, wow, he's got all the information, the data. And so we just need to help, um, you know, help him better present his message, you know, uh, with music, with my expertise. He's the expert in health. I'm the expert in music. And so um, we're working on some things. And then I was telling him about doing a membership site, doing having his own uh, platform. He has his own courses and he has a bunch of stuff. He wrote a book, too. And so. Um, but, yeah, look him up. Braxton Montgomery. Baxter, I'm sorry, Baxter Montgomery. Um, and he has a, a website called uh, Food Garden Kitchen, Garden Kitchen. So you can order raw fruits, vegetable packages that will he'll mail out to you uh, every week. But uh, the formula is basically to, res to reduce chronic illness or if you have any issues with stuff, just do raw fruits and vegetables. It's um, for, you know, try for a week or so and see how you feel after that. And, um, but yeah, I'm learning, I'm learning. And he has a community where you can get in there and ask questions and they do Zooms every week and stuff like that. Um, so I'm, I'm learning, but you just, um, 
you know, it's just a beautiful thing uh, when you see what other people are doing and you see how we can help each other because he's helping me because he got the research. I'm helping me him with the, the, uh, the music. And um, I'm excited to see what comes about. But we're all, uh, you know, we have passions. We have um, uh, businesses. And so we're able to help each other with our expertise. And so, um, you know, I share through here, through YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I try to be consistent. I'm not as consistent like I was, but I'm getting back to it because you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, got to connect with new audiences. So just take, just take note of that. Like wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just take some notes from this broadcast. Make sure you're consistent. Make sure one of the highlights that I said was make sure that whatever you do that you have a passion for, uh, make sure you can uh, do that to, and share it with others to where um, they can even watch the process. Because you have two sides. You, you got the actual delivering of a, of a product and service, but you also have the education on how to, um, to do that that particular or the, or the craft, you know, the education of the craft, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you have both, both sides. You can be a photographer to take great photos, but you can also teach photography. You can teach art. Like you have people who are great artists, they can draw, you know, but then you have another side. People want to know how do you do what you do? What's your approach? So you always got two different, um sides or 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 uh what you can say services that you can offer um so be thinking about that and so also like i said think about how when you start doing stuff even if you don't have a product or service yet but you're just teasing people on what you're doing just share it and then over time as you develop something then you can share it with your audience and get feedback see what they think always give stuff away free and uh, build your audience and then talk to your audience, get feedback from your audience. They'll give you what you should do, uh, you know, what they think you should do because they enjoy the journey. You got people like you all, I don't know where you all are, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? You be working, you're doing what you're doing, and then you just be chilling on the, on the couch or on the toilet, <laughs> you know, pull up your phone, see a, a you stream i mean a, a a live stream youtube facebook and say let me see what's happening but i'll say something that'll inspire you and be like you know what i'm gonna start working on uh my music or i'm gonna start working on my youtube channel i'm gonna start working on my instagram you know what i'm saying because um you know we we all learn from each other we all inspire each other we're human beings and so uh we got to help each other get to that next that next place. We got to help each other be productive. We can't be stagnant and slothful. We got to be responsible with our lives and the gifts and talents that God has blessed us with, because it's not just for us to just hoard, you know, it's for us to share it and uh, be a blessing. And so that's what I'm about. And that's what I'm sticking to. And I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, and yeah, go out there if you haven't gotten it already. Get the Christian musician. I probably need to put the audio book inside of the Texas Tenor Academy. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put that on my list to do. Um, I'm way behind. I gotta finish my entrepreneurial musician book. So, um, but yeah, I'm way behind. I gotta get stuff together, y'all. I gotta get it together. I gotta get it together. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. Christian Musician, uh, Texas Tenor Academy, check that out. Q Streams, you can be a part of that in there and get access to my music and the videos, performance videos in there. I'm recording videos every week um, or whenever I play um, and I'm putting them inside of there so you can watch those gigs and chill out and learn and, and you know entertain yourself. I can entertain you with that. So that's it for now. We will see you next go around. We like 49 minutes. Um, I didn't look at the chat to see if there were any uh, messages that came in. 
So let me look right quick and see if there's any. If there is not, okay, I see some. What up, Kwaman? What up, what up? The mayor of Abuja. What's going on? What up? That sounds good. Laugh. I'm just looking. Yes, sir. No problem. It's just it said thank you. Awesome stream. Yep. Y'all know what it is. Glad to be a blessing. All right, that's it, y'all. We will see y'all next go around. I'm going to go in the house, hang out with the missus and the kids and see what's going on, eat on something. Uh, pray for me. I ain't all the way vegan. I ain't, you know. And that's a whole nother subject. I got to learn a lot about all of that. But it's one of those things where you know it's something better. You need to do better. <laughs> but it's a process. <laughs> anyway, I'm out, y'all. Peace.